All right, everyone, I'd like to entitle this one Northern Culture and how it plays into political discourse. Uh, I've lived in Connecticut my whole life. Yeah, it kind of sucks here, but the surrounding area and a lot of the wildlife and nature is pretty cool, pretty based. So I'd like to say just about how people socially click in the north or the northeast to be in particular. I don't know that it's the same in Montana, probably definitely the same in Chicago. But in the Northeast, we're talking about the descendants of, you know, you know, the Reformers, the Protestants, the, I forget the other word for Puritans even. There's a lot of that still lying around up here. Um, first and foremost, I'd just like to discuss how it goes into social and political debates, arguments, and uh, getting along and such. In the North, whether you like someone or don't, it's considered okay to bust their stones. This transcends racial lines leftists, it does. Remember, these are the people that fought to free your precious slaves. We like to make fun of each other. It's kind of, so you don't go too far. And usually, if you're in a group of people, somebody will shut you up if you're going too far, even before the person has to. That's just kind of the culture around it. We'll use derogatory words, curse a lot. This is what I would like to define as northern shit-talking culture, because that's basically what it is. We like to talk shit to one another. It's kind of how we settle to an even keel, and maybe even the uncome come together. It was an interesting story. Uh, not a huge sports fan anymore, but living in the Northeast, man, Boston. It's all about Boston. Uh, one of the greatest teams ever was the 1980s Boston Celtics, and there was a big three. It was Larry Bird, Robert Parrish, and Kevin McHale. Larry Bird was a notorious trash talker, uh, like notorious. He would say things scoff at the other team up and down the court, talk shit, call his shots. He was really notorious for it. And Robert Parrish is a Hall of Famer teammate of his, and part of the original Big Three was him, Kevin McHale, and Bird. And on his time here as a, you know, like a big black guy, I think Robert Parrish is like 7'1", he's a monster. So <clears throat> in his time here, he always said that there was a lot of trash talking, but there was a lot of love. And that's kind of what Northern culture is. There's love under the facade of ire, I wouldn't go with hatred, that's a stupid word, it doesn't really fit, uh, disdain. Uh, there's love under these things, and that's what northern culture is. So a lot of people getting censored by these SJWs are essentially northerners who just want to speak in their normal tongue. Uh, Sticks would probably know this, Sticks Hexenham or 666, he's kind of from the same regional, general region. So... It's just simply the culture here. It doesn't matter, you know, who you are, where you come from, what color you are. It is the culture to bust each other's stones. That's what we call it. And it seems like a lot of the, you know, these claims by the other side, they're attacking people that are just talking in their native tongue. It's attack on nativism. The nativism that kind of founded America, if you think about it, because everything started up here. Connecticut, Massachusetts, from Maine all the way down to Georgia, Florida. That's where all the first colonies from, like, clearly my ancestors came from. And this is just over time how we've aggregated things. And I think a lot of it comes from the straying of the Puritan values, not being so uptight, and uh, it just became unfashionable after a certain point. So this is sort of the culture that developed, and it's been developing for well over a hundred years. And I gotta say, I love it. People come up from the South and they kind of look at you like, you for real? What are you, what are you calling me? It's like, no, 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 dude, it's not what it is. It's, this is how we do it up here. We joke around. We bust each other's balls. This is what the people who freed the slaves leftists like to do. We like to use slurs, not in a derogatory manner. We like to use them in a friendly joking one. I never see this argument ever put up. Ever. 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 Even by most of the content creators with this very weird tie-in of, like, I've had family that's fought in almost every stupid war this country's ever had. The only war that I ever, like, lost ancestors in was the Civil War. And I lost, like, two or three of them. I think it was, like, two on one side and one on the other. So the Civil War, like, for Americans was stupid bloody compared to everything else. And, you know, like, wrongfully, but, you know, they're given the, the hero label. And at the same time, the culture 
that these, quote, heroes created is scorned and it is disallowed by the people that wish to claim the right of those who actually did the work. It always kind of works like that. Um, I know I've gone into this before, but I kind of see it with Kennedy. I see Kennedy, I mean, don't get me wrong, Wilson was evil, dude. I mean, FDR was lame, more ways than one. But it really seemed, the modern schism and the modern problem with the Democrats seemed to be after Kennedy. And I mean, call me a conspiracy theorist, because I guess I am here, because the original, the, the legit story doesn't make any sense. I think they killed him <laughs> to take his image. And that's what they've been doing ever since. And they masquerade with it. And that's why they look cringy. But they want to be the party of Kennedy. They want to be the party of FDR. Because they killed him. <laughs> and they killed the culture that they pretend to like. Peace out.